This is Domongos Tomchany. He's gonna. He may be probably the youngest presenter at Hacktivity this weekend. Um, but even at his young age, he posts an uh, impressive CV with several publications and presentations. Amongst others, he worked out a new attack theory against WPA2 AES. And he's going to give you a presentation on something I think most people will find very interesting, especially if you have wives or girlfriends. So I'll let him tell you the topic. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to say excuse all of you because of the technical difficulties, but somehow the projector just couldn't recognize my PC. So we are using currently a VNC connection to that one, so it's going to be slow as you've seen it already, but I hope it's going to be okay. Before I get into more stuff, I would like to ask all of you, just as a countermeasure, to turn off your 3G phones, or as, at least turn off 3G on your phones. I've taken every countermeasure, there shouldn't be any surprises, but it's always a good thing to just turn off 3G. Nothing else, you can have GSM working, but 3G, just turn it off for this presentation. Thank you. So, it's called Give Me a Phone That Cannot Be Traced. And we will see at the end of this presentation if I'm right or wrong. But uh, before I get into stuff, I would like to talk just a little bit about me. So as uh, I have already been introduced a little bit, I started wireless hacking and radio stuff back in 2006. And I'm currently part of a new startup company in Hungary called Bodri. And uh, we are looking to do some fun stuff in Hungary, but uh, currently we are just developing, so you will not hear from us for a long time, but sometimes maybe we just uh, get into the market and you will see us. I am the guy who is everywhere talking about random stuff and he is young. Well, that's, uh, I got this quote quite a bit of time. Well, that's what I was used to be when I was 17. I'm 20, so I'm just old and boring, so you shouldn't listen to me at all. And I'm overusing smileys, and I got one shiny certificate to show. It's a CEH certificate. Isn't that cool? All right. So the topic, it's going to be about phones and 3G and locating people. So as you've seen in this comic, uh, I told you they were uh, tracking us with our cell phones. So can they track us with our cell phones? Definitely yes. But can you hide from authorities trying to find you? We shall see. Okay, uh, just a quick thing, it's uh, presentation versus discussion. Currently, I would like it to be a discussion. I would like it to be open to you. So anytime you want to say something, you say, oh, that's not right, you got it wrong, just raise your hand or just shout it in, because I would really like you to be involved in this, because this is a theory, so dragons are ahead for sure, but the main thing is uh, there might be something I just forgot about or I don't know because I'm not really working that much into the telecom industry. So anyone knows a lot about that or thinks that I'm wrong, just shout in and then I would like to talk about it. So, the agenda for today. The basics of finding a cell phone without a GPS. So we're not talking about smartphones. We're not talking about a phone that has GPS in it. I'm talking about a regular phone. Just like, for example, this one I'm going to use. It's a Nokia E51. doesn't have anything special in it. It has 3G. It's an older business phone, but it doesn't have GPS in it. So mainly, if you would like to find a cell phone like that, how would you do that? Then the second one is going to be about uh, femtocells. What, what is a femtocell? How can you use it for hacking? And, and the history of femtocell hacking, actually, you can see one here, right there. And uh, just about how they uh, kind of connect together with my idea of having an untraceable phone. Then it's going to be a live demo, w about which I'm not 100% sure because it requires a good internet connection and currently we are running on 3G, but hopefully it's going to work out. Uh, we shall see. And of course there is going to be a counter recommended countermeasures for operators using femtocells for sure. So, finding your phone. It's a, a very a basic and well-known technique. It's called multilateration, or many of you might know it as triangulation. And it requires pretty much three towers and the cell phone. And it's just pretty much the old physics uh, formula everybody knows. Distance equals time times velocity. So if a phone can measure the time that was required for the signal from the tower to get to the phone, it can figure out its distance from the tower. So if you have enough towers, like let's say three towers, you can figure out how far you are from each of these towers, and then you can start like drawing circles. 
and more circles and in the end in the intersection you will kind of know where the phone is. Uh, also uh, uh, operators can ask the phone in which cell are you currently located, which towers can you see and so on. So an operator can pretty easily do this and find the phone. So that's, that's pretty much the technique they use for finding a uh, phone, for example, when the authority asks you, for example, the police is trying to find someone. Now let's get into the topic of femtocells and 3G. So 3G is the new standards, or I shouldn't say new because we have 4G already, but let's say 3G is the newer standard for mobile communication, and it, it is supposed to be the successor of GSM. So the exactly same services GSM offers you, which is uh, slow data connection, uh, voice calls and SMS. The same stuff is in 3G, so you can use 3G for all of this stuff. And in the 3G standard, they introduced a new thing or a kind of special thing, which is called the home node B, or as many of you might know, it's called a femtocell. What is a femtocell? As you can see here, here is a reference model of how a femtocell should work, and here is the actual femtocell, it's, a, it's HMB, so home node B. So what it does, it connects via the internet to the operator's network, hopefully on a secured connection, we will see that. And after it's connected to the uh, operator's network, it will do some uh, authentication with the uh, operator, and then after that it will start acting like a mini little 3G cell. So you can Think about this femtocell stuff like having a Wi-Fi access point, but instead of Wi-Fi, 3G is coming out of it. So, and then phones can connect to it, and you can configure it how, which phone can connect to it, any phone can connect to it, or maybe you want only your numbers to be connected to it. And it is supposed to have customers that have a broadband internet connection at home, but for example, they're living in, living in a basement or they live in some special areas where there is no coverage at all or no 3G coverage and for some reason they want to have 3G at their homes and therefore they just plug this little device in. This is actually a Vodafone, a Vodafone, Vodafone uh, uh, femtocell. Uh, hopefully they will not get me, whatever. So this femtocell is from Vodafone. Uh, it's uh, uh, an older model, but um, still many people use it. And there is also a newer model, but what I'm going to show you today, it works on every single Vodafone femtocell, even the ones that uh, are uh, in production in Hungary. So you can buy a femtocell here in Hungary too, and the same things will work with it. So let's just look at how uh, operators usually implement a femtocell uh, um, infrastructure, I should say. So here is just a little bit bigger picture of how femtocell infrastructure looks like. So that part is the home node B, that's exactly the same Vodafone share signal uh, femtocell. It uses IPsec to uh, have a secure connection back to the home basis or to do back to Vodafone. And um, it doesn't have, uh, it is running and an, a special system on chip architecture. It has an ARM processor in it, and uh, it doesn't have any uh, inputs or anything that could, that could help any attacker to compromise the device, at least the current ones. So it, there is no SSH server, there is no HTTP server installed on it, there is nothing. There is a, an IP tables rule that drops everything except stuff that coming from Vodafone and except stuff going out to Vodafone and only just uh, and it allows only DHCP packets and IPsec packets through the thing. So if you don't find an implementation error or a buffer overflow in, a, in the IPsec part of it, it actually using an open source IPsec daemon, then uh, you won't be able to compromise it. So that's pretty much what I would wanted to say about it. But what would happen if someone would be able to compromise a femtocell? Well, uh, you can do pretty much anything because once you have access to the femtocell, you can uh, create a small kernel driver that will redirect every single packet before the IPsec encryption happens. It will redirect every single packet to your program and then your program can pass it to the IPsec part. So you can eavesdrop any calls that is going through the cell. You can perform queries against the core network like a regular phone would perform a query saying, hey, I'm phone number or whatever, and the net core network would say, okay, then you are allowed to do this and this because based on your subscription, what, how much money you have on your SIM card and stuff like that, it would 
allow you to do certain stuff. But uh, if, you are, if you have a rooted fantasy, you can say, okay, I'm phone number, something totally different and I would like to, let's say, place a call. And you can do that freely because why wouldn't you be able? It seems to be that the call is, con I mean, the phone is connected to the femtocell. It is allowed to do that and it's just placing a call. And also you can attack the core network if you want, so you can dump data out of it. And many people say who work with femtocells that the interface that is connected to the femtocell, so there's a special gateway for femtocell connections that is not so secure. So some people would be able to actually compromise the core network using the connection of a femtocell. But I already said so somebody did some research on it, so yeah, somebody already did it. Okay, not the Simpsons, but there were actually three basic or main uh, researchers or researches that uh, were dealing with femtocells. And the first one is by the Hacker's Choice. They worked actually with these Vodafone boxes. And the first version of these Vodafone boxes, which I will show you right now, looks like this. Looks kind of similar to the other one, but it had serial connection in the back. And you can see a USB to serial adapter is actually connected to this one. So you would be able to see all the boot messages and you were able, be able to uh, talk to the device. And they got the password pretty easy figured out. It was for the root account, it was new sys. So, wow, that, that wasn't long and they figured it out pretty easily. So they actually rooted a device like this. And uh, Vodafone was really scared. I mean, as you have seen the consequences of rooting a device, it's really bad for them. So what did they do? Well, they reacted pretty fast. What they did is they issued a software update that would, uh, that would turn off the serial port, kind of just telling for the embedded Linux to not listen on the serial port. And they also uh, banned all these devices from their core network. So the Vodafone femtocell gateway now recognizes if a device is, a, is one of the hack devices and it's just not allowing it for it to connect to the, back to the network. And uh, they also changed uh, later, they changed the design of the PCB that's in it and it's called the 1.5 board. This is the 1.0 board and there's a 1.5 and the 2.0 board. And the 1.5 board does not have serial connection at all. And the new ones you can buy right now in Vodafone stores. It's a Vodafone Sure Signal 2, or two, uh, that's PCB model 2.0. And that's a smaller device. It's a little bit different. And actually, it uses a newer system on chip design, which, is, which has special fuses in it to disable all debugging and all JTAGing and any kind of hardware hacking you would think into. And of course, after the production is going well, Vodafone decided to actually uh, burn these fuses. So not right now, as far as I know, there is no way to get into uh, a Vodafone Sure Signal 2 device. Okay, the next uh, research was by uh, these three gentlemen who are working at the uh, Technical University of Berlin, so they are working all in Germany. And uh, they presented at Black Hat 2011, and they used a different femtocell, which is currently in use in France by the operator called SFR. And uh, the funny thing about that femtocell is that a lot, it, that femtocell is a lot worse in terms of security than the Vodafone one. Why? Because, for example, it has an HTTP server running on it. And of course, the server was running with root privileges and the researchers just found out a little buffer overflow in the server code and they were able to compromise the device pretty easily. And also they performed some hardware hacking and of course there was a JTAG and serial connector which allowed them to hack the device fully. They have a nice blog post about that, going through how, how they found uh, the uh, vulnerability in the HTTP server, how they figured out what payload to use and stuff like that. And it seems to like a normal exploit. So it wasn't very special. And they presented all of the things I talked about earlier, like what could cause a problem. They presented all of these problems one by one, each by each at the Black Hat 2011. And actually this femtocell is from, uh, from uh, one of these guys, from Kevin. He was really nice and helpful. And when I asked him via email, he sent me this one because right now you cannot buy 
uh, 1.0 boards anymore because they were just, uh, many of them were replaced by Vodafone, so they just went to the customer and said, your share signal is cool, but we would like to change it to this one. It looks exactly the same, nothing special, you don't need to worry about anything. But therefore, they have all the 1.0 boards at their base, so they are not giving it anyway. So I, I was uh, really happy that Kevin offered me this one so I can just show a little bit how it was back in 2009 when the Hackers Choice was doing the research on it and what they were able to see and do on the femtocell. And the last one is a pretty new one. It's by the group called Fail Overflow. And uh, it's, it's a funny one actually. It's for the, for the AT&T uh, femtocell which is currently in production and you can buy it in the US. And that femtocell is a lot more complex than the Vodafone one. I will tell you later why. But the funny thing was that it was a little configuration error that caused all the trouble. And the configuration error was so easy because what they did is they had a backdoor installed on the AT&T femtocell. And it was configured to listen on a specific port. And whatever command would just come in on that port, the femtocell would actually execute that command with root privileges. But the funny thing was, wait, wait, there, there, is, there is more. The funny thing is that uh, they made it, the configuration was so that they made it to listen on, not only on the IPsec connection that goes to the operator, it was listening on 0.0.0.0, which means from every single network, even from your home network, you were able to access it and it would listen to you. So the guy, what the guy just did, he figured out there is, oh, there is a root shell for me right now, so he uploaded just a little program to turn on SSH, and from there, he was in the device. Well, that's AT&T. Okay, so, as I already said, I'm working with Vodafone femtocells. So, and I already said they are pretty secure. They have these fuses, they have a new PCB, they have configured the software right. So let's assume that the femtocells nowadays in use are pretty secure for the Vodafone part, let's say that. So what can we do? There is, all, there is still one thing we can do without routing the device. So we could just handle the whole device as a black box and we, I will show you what we can do with it. So how to become untraceable? Well, the femtocell is using the internet to communicate with the core network, as I already said, via IPsec. And what the operator needs to verify that the femtocell is operating in such a place, I mean physically in such a place, where it's allowed to do it. For example, uh, for the Vodafone UK femtocells, it's only allowed to work inside of the United Kingdom, for sure, because Vodafone UK does not have the right to uh, emit radi radio signals anywhere else in the world, right? But uh, how to verify that the femtocell is actually in the United Kingdom? Well, uh, Vodafone is using the IP address so if, you, if the femtocell is connecting back, the Vodafone will naturally see the IP address it's connecting from to verify uh, the location. And it also requires you to register the femtocell with them and tell them where would you like to use it. Uh, I'm just highlighting the stuff I'm kind of <laughs> funny. I find funny because, so the location is based on the IP address and the address I'm giving to Vodafone. I mean, which one of these cannot I forge? I can forge both of them, right? Okay, how to do this? Let's get to real stuff. So how would you be able to uh, have a Vodafone femtocell connected back to the core network from anywhere on the world? Well, go to eBay, search for Vodafone Sure Signal. You will find plenty of these. You can buy them for like 50 or uh, 60 bucks. It's not so, not so expensive. You buy it and the guy will just mail it to you easily. Okay, but the next one is a pretty tricky one. You need to have a Vodafone United Kingdom SIM card to register the, the femtocell with the SIM card account. How would you get a Vodafone UK uh, SIM card? Well, you go to eBay, you type in, type in Vodafone prepaid SIM card and you will get plenty of those. Even you can get one with like 10 or 20 uh, British pounds, so money is loaded on it. It's a prepaid SIM card and it works pretty easily. So you just wait a little bit and the mail will give you everything you need. Okay, now you have a SIM card, now you have a femtocell. Good. Let's start. If you go to vodafone.co.uk, you, 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 you need to register your SIM card and after that you need to uh, register your sure signal. Alright, so they're asking for a sure signal postcode. So they would like to know where I'm using the device. Well, 
they need a postcode. How should I get a postcode from the United Kingdom? Come on, I mean, I cannot do this. I'm, li I'm living in Hungary. Yeah, Google Maps is pretty easy for that. You know, you just go to Google Maps, choose a random location in the UK, right click, say what is here, and it will tell you the postcode, it will tell you the address. And it works. I tried it, and it's working. So yeah, I am a registered owner of a Femtocell, and I'm currently located in, at the Leather Market Street in London, if anyone, anyone would like to know that. Yep, I'm right there. You can see me. I'm smiling on the camera right here. Okay, now we just need a United Kingdom IP address to connect back to the uh, core network, right? There are tons of uh, free and even paid uh, VPN services, but what if one UK was a tricky one here because they blocked almost all of them. So these people are really smart. You shouldn't mess with them, right? You can see it. they need an address, they need a postcode, and now they banned all of the UK IP addresses you would be able to connect here. Well, yeah, I had to rent my own VPS server and I set up my own VPN, it cost me like 10 USDs. So right now I have a, a virtual private server running in the United Kingdom and the IP address of the vi virtual private server looks just like an ordinary UK IP address. Nobody knows I'm, I'm running a VPN server on it. So here I go, right? So now about how to get like really untraceable. So let's say, now you can see that from anywhere in the world I will be able to uh, communicate with the rest of the world as a Vodafone UK customer and let's say somebody would like to find me. Okay, so they would go like, okay, where is this guy connecting from? Well, the only cell tower it can see is the sure signal. Okay, so where is the sure signal femtocell located? Okay, let's figure it out. Here is the IP address. Okay, that leads nowhere because that's only a virtual private server. All right, then let's go back and figure out where is the address. Okay, we go to the address, letter market street, there is no one using that femtocell. Well, that's tricky. Okay, let's figure out something else. How about we go to the VPS server and try to get all the logs from them and figure out who was connected in that specific time frame to that VPS, VPS server. And, uh, well, what's, what would I say? It's my VPS. I can do whatever I want. For example, I'm not having any logs. I'm shredding it every single second. I'm not taking any logs. So how would anyone figure out who was connected to that server? But even if there's someone would figure it out, I, should, I can do stuff like, okay, chain loading all the VP, VPNs, right? because my, I can connect to my VPN from anywhere on the world, so I can just use like proxy servers or whatever, jump around the world, and in the end just connect back to my VPN server and there I am. So how would you be able to figure out where I am? I don't think there is any way to figure out where I am and where I'm placing that call from. So I have a cell phone that is able to place calls, receive calls, text messages, whatever, and nobody would be able to figure out where I am physically located. So here is the solution again, just a bigger picture. So I have this sure signal here in Hungary and it's connected to the internet and uh, via the internet it's actually uh, going through my VPS server that is located in the UK and that VPS server goes to, the, uh, goes to Vodafone actually. And Vodafone cannot uh, figure out if I'm in the UK or not and it's, it's, it's just as simple as that. If I would be able to use like 4G LTE or now I'm gonna use 3G, I can even be in a car and moving around with my femtocell and having just a little 30 meter radius uh, UK, Vodafone UK cell around me and I can go anywhere I want. When I have 4G coverage, for example, in Hungary or whatever country I'm living in, I can be whatever in that country. So I can even move more and nobody would be able to trace me down as far as I think. Okay, let's get to the demo. So here you will be able to see my phone, my Nokia E51. And as you can see, I'm unlocking it. And as you can see, it is connected to the Hungarian Vodafone network currently via 3G. And so if I would like to like uh, place a call, then uh, could you just turn up right now because the audio will go through Bluetooth back to the uh, uh, system you can hear. So it, that's the Vodafone customer service number. If I try to call it, it will just fail. Of course, it's, it cannot be connected. All right. And it cannot be connected. So let's try something else. Let's open up my virtual machine that is right here. So, all right, 
Wow, okay, the screen is just a little bit big. Okay, here we go. It's getting back. Okay. Unlocking. So, here I have Wireshark open because we will be able to study the packets a little bit later. But the part is like, I, I, I set up everything. So here is my, uh, I think that's my server. So you can see it is running, it is in the UK. I will not uh, shut down, wait, I can show you actually, it's in the UK. Uh, I have config. All right, it's just a little bit slow, I guess. Okay. Okay, I cannot type in it. Okay, you, you will need to trust me on this one, I guess, because I don't wanna uh, mess up the stuff I set up before the thing. So it's, it's located in the UK. So what I'm gonna do now is, you can see the sure signal is connected to my ethernet port, which is connected to virtual machine, and all it does is just a little bit of IP tables magic that will get all the packets coming from the sure signal directly to the VPN and directly to the United Kingdom. So hopefully we will see it working. Oh, I need to check one thing because we, need, we changed the internet connection, so that might cause a problem. It seems to me that it's still connected to the server seems to be good, but okay, the client seems to be not good. Let's connect again. Or okay, it says no route to the host. But I think it, it might be connected. All right, here we go. Why is there no route? All right, let's stop this again. And try this one more time. Okay, just a sec, I guess. Or it might, might be, okay, wait, it might be working. Okay, let's stop the server and then we will see. Oh, my SSH connection with the server just broke down. Okay, that makes some sense. All right, let's close this down. And let's open up a new terminal here. Okay. Here we go. Just one little script to log into SSH. And starting, all right. I will not hit that again. Come on. I don't know how. I call it server.com, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. okay. Let's kill all VPN and figure it out. Oh, wait, what the heck? Okay, so I, I could not connect to my server. That seems to be shitty. Well, that's not looking good at all. Maybe my Wi-Fi is bad. Oh, I, I, it seems to be I'm having internet access. Okay, let's try to boot up the, might be the problem with the uh, virtual machine, but maybe now. Okay, no route to the host. Do I have internet in here? Okay, it has DNS but no internet. Okay, that is one heck of a problem. Okay, that's ethernet zero. Okay, let's bring up the virtual stuff. Just a sec, I think I will be able to figure this out pretty soon, but let's say if I'm not getting anywhere in five minutes, then I'm gonna change for sure. Okay, connecting back. We am that zero should be up and running now. Let's run a DH client on Ethernet zero. Okay, don't mess with me Linux. Here should we go. Okay, wait. Here we go, I got internet. Yay. Now I can connect to the SSH. 
I hope it should. Oh, here we go. Okay, that's that's cool. That's now really cool. Okay, I just need to kill all open VPN. Open VPN. Here we go, and then do open VPN minus minus config and the server conf. Okay, a server is running, and I will just run this routing script, which is of course not working because the SSH on this one is still dead. But I will be able to fix that in a sec. And let's do the routing script. I hope you have 3G on. Actually, it, this phone should have 3G enabled because otherwise it will be really slow. And Vodafone is actually checking you. What they do is if they have a latency more than 150 milliseconds, then it will not allow to, uh, for the femtocell to start broadcasting because the, then the phone calls would be just choppy and stuff like that you would not like to get into. Okay, and now I can connect. Okay, I'm connected to the VPN server, good. Now I'm ready to roll. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, get back to Wireshark and then start listening on ETH one because that's my ethernet card so you will be able to see all the only the packets that it, that are coming from the femtocell so i plug it in and here we should go slowly and here we go so it's starting to uh starting up a dhcp trying to figure out where it is trying to get an ip address and once it got the ip address it will try to look up one of the uh vodafone servers and then once it's find an IP address, it will try to do IPsec with it. While it's doing this, I would like to show you the hacked femtocell, just how, a boot, how the boot process looks like on a hacked femtocell. So here I have Putty connected to my serial port, and I will plug in uh, this femtocell too, so you will see how it looks like. So it's uh, using U-boot to start up uh, the stuff. It's just doing some self-testing in the beginning testing the RAMs, and after it's up with that, it will start up the embedded uh, Linux. Well, it's not really seeable. Can you see it? What would you say? It's not, not so good, right? Maybe I will change the color to yellow, and then maybe that will be better for you. We will say appearance, and hopefully I have it here. No, that's only the script. Uh, the colors, here we go. Default cursor text, if I'm right. Should be the foreground. The foreground? Okay, thank you, man. I will get it to yellowish. Apply. Okay, might maybe a little bit better. Okay. Okay, what just happened here? Because it's, it's saying something like erasing the whole device, and I, I don't really like that when it's doing stuff, stuff like that. Maybe there was a problem. I, I have a lot of problems, I can see. Okay, maybe there was just a, just a, a bad block at the NAND. This OK should be good. Yeah, it was, it, oh, I see, so it was scanning on the file system, and it just found some errors, so it should be uh, booting now. So let's just go back a little bit and see what just happened. Okay, so here we had, <coughs> it started booting the image. It's an ARM uh, embedded Linux standalone uh, program. You can see it here. It's uncompressing it, so it, it's just uncompressing the kernel and then uh, it started checking out all the ingredients on it. You can see it has a CPLD on it. There is also a little FPGA on it for signal processing. And then here you can see it's the PC202 board. So it has the Pika chip uh, 202, 202 uh, system on chip on it. That's an older uh, chip from Pika chip and Pika chip is the biggest, uh, I should say, uh, brand or company that is uh, creating uh, 3G femtocells, actually just system-on-chip solutions for 3G femtocells. 
So it's not doing a factory reset and so on. And here we go. So right now we're just loading in some drivers. And as you can see, it's a pretty funny message up here. I will read it loud if I can. This system is restricted slowly, solely to the operator's authorized users for legitimate business purposes only. The actual or attempted unauthorized access, user modification, blah, 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 blah. You should go to hell and die. That's what they say. <laughs> but if you hit enter, it will give you a login. So I can say root. And I already told you it's the password new sys. So uh, here I am, root login to the femto cell. So that's how, that's how it looked like to the guys at the Hacker's Choice back in 2009 when they did the research. And this, here you can see, oh hell, I'm sorry, but of course we have problems again. Let's see how the lights are showing. Yeah, because it could be good because when it's blinking, Okay, it's not showing it has internet connectivity. And I know why, because I screwed it up again. I have a little more, one little more script, which I did not run, of course. Here, it's called other stuff. And it should be connected now. Maybe. It's doing some ARP magic. It doing, it's here, you can, it's doing a DNS uh, query to a Vodafone. Oh, here you go. So you can see it is now doing the authentication part of IPsec. And uh, in a second, if it goes well, then it will start, uh, it will start broadcasting. And the internet connection seems to be good, but I need one more thing, that little check mark to be lighted up. But you can see ESP packets here, so it's, it's actually communicating. Here you have a lot of ESP packets. That is showing that it's con communicating with the, with the core network of Vodafone. And this light is blinking slowly, so it should be ready. I'm pretty sure now it's testing the network connection. So hopefully the 3G phone we're using will be okay in terms of speed and latency. And let's see if it's working or not. Okay, it seems to be okay. So let's try with the phone to try, uh, connect to this new network. Unlocking the phone. And you cannot see it. Wait, okay. It's still connected to the Hungarian one. So let's go to the settings and change and try to change in, uh, the network. Uh, let's go to, okay, this is not the one, this one I want phone and then go into network and change the operator mode to uh, from automatic to doing it by hand. Just make it a little bit smaller so you can see the whole screen up there. So it's searching for networks and hopefully, yeah, this, this looks good. What if phone UK is up there? All right, let's connect to it, right? Okay, I just need a little bit more time when it's connecting. And it's already told me that the home network is selected. And uh, here you can see I'm connected to Vodafone UK. So the next thing will be my Bluetooth connection just broke with the phone, but I will just get that back in a sec because I will have a Bluetooth audio connection, hopefully. If it's not working, I'm just going to call Vodafone from here and then tell them it's not working. <laughs> Actually, I can. All oh, right. So my Bluetooth just broke, or did it? No, it is showing. Actually, okay. Let's try. Uh, hope we will hear something. Okay. Okay. Bluetooth is not going through for sure. I can see that. So here we go, connected to Vodafone United Kingdom. I have the customer service online. I can call them for free because they, they are free from the United Kingdom, from their own network. And I did it on 3G, thanks to you. <laughs> thanks again for the phone. I got it from my nice friend here in the front. Okay, so that was my demo, and 
Of course, I'm pretty sure some of you would like to do it too. So here, here are the problems with uh, reproducing my demo here. <laughs> it is totally against the terms and conditions of the Vodafone United Kingdom because it specifically says the Phantom Cell should only be operated in the United Kingdom. It is totally against all the laws because you are pretty much jamming on a frequency. So currently I am jamming on a specific frequency which is the property of the Hungarian Vodafone which is quite funny because it seems that all, both Vodafone in the UK and in Hungary using the same uh, frequency for, for 3G. But uh, I tried to contact them and we had many emails about this and tried to get an official permission from that, but they didn't give me anything. And in the end, they said, okay, uh, you can do it, but uh, you need to ask actually the government because we have an agency that is coordinating all the frequencies. So I called the government. Fortunately, I had uh, one of my friends were actually working in that agency and I called him and he said, no, no, it's totally up to Vodafone to let you do it. So I was just kind of ping-ponging between the two authorities and in the end I was like, heck, I will show you this demo. I, I, I don't think it will cause any problems or interference for anyone because it's just like a 30 meter radius, radius and it's not even that thing. But if you really want to do all what I just did, it's everything is up on the Hacker's Choice Wiki. And I had a link to that. It's actually thc.org slash Vodafone. Everything from setting up a VPN server to crea uh, creating IP tables rules, everything is up on there. So you can, excuse me, you can do whatever you want. It's up and free and you can read it. Okay. And let's get to the operator standpoint. I don't want people to do this because it's hurting me because they can go anywhere in the world and not pay any roaming fees and actually they can just uh, call from wherever they want and I cannot trace them. So what would, what would make this impossible to do? Well, the good thing would be implementing something that would verify the Fantasel's location. Here are some of my ideas. GPS is an option for sure, as you have seen. I, I didn't tell you, but I, or maybe I did. But in the AT&T Femtocell, they are actually having GPS in it. But I don't. I think using GPS is pretty much just uh, against the purpose of the Femtocell because tell me a location in the world where you don't have uh, 3G coverage but you have GPS coverage. So these phantom cells are especially for basements and buildings with walls and, and uh, thick walls actually that do not let uh, any radio signals through. So how would you be able to get a GPS fix on the device? I don't think that's even possible. Or, or it, there, must, there might be some, uh, I mean, there might be some uh, places where you can do this, but I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, what I would think would be a better idea is, uh, Actually, these cells have a 2G, uh, uh, a 2G chip in them too, and this 2G chip is just like uh, the ones you, you're in your phones, and that 2G chip should be able to look around for neighboring towers and figure out if they, those towers are in the UK or not. Well, that's only an option if you, have, if you don't have 3G but you have 2G. But if you don't have even 2G, then I wouldn't be able to figure out any good solution for that. So I would like to ask you if you have any better idea for the operators, because they're listening, I hope, uh, to figure out how, where exactly the phantom cell is located. Okay, so I pretty much figured out everything, I guess. <laughs> okay, I would be open to questions now. Questions and comments. Yes? Well, first of all, it's against all the laws and the terms and conditions. I, I, would, I, wouldn't, I couldn't say it. I couldn't say stuff like, yeah, go out and do it, because then Vodafone would probably sue me for that. But uh, it's against the law. If you want to do it, taking your own risks, go ahead. I mean, why not? But actually, it is violating uh, all the rules. So actually, you can get sued for this, and you can get uh, into prison because of radio jamming, pretty much. It's like a pir pirate radio stuff. So you, you, will, you will get into prisons. Because actually you, you are using what I'm now using Vodafone's frequency and I'm not allowed to do that officially. Any other questions, comments? All right then, uh, I will let you up to lunch. Thank you for your attention.